With the launch of patch 10.1, we've got a bunch of new mounts, some really cool ones in here. So let's go over every new mount in Dragonflight 10.1 and how to get them. Let's start off with the snails. First up, the Seethin Slug. This little slug mount is based on a hidden drop up in the Zakari Caldera, the left side of the map where the big orange quests spawn. There's loads of molten fire here. You have to fly around and you have to look for these little things called Seething Orbs. Clicking on one of these orbs will give you a debuff and you need three of these debuffs. So try and find these orbs. You might want to jump shards, go war mode, join different groups to try and find them when they spawn. When one spawns, all of them spawn. So try and find them as fast as you can. Once you find three, you'll get a message. You hear a dark kiss from the Northern Shrine. Head over to the Northern Shrine in this area and click it once you've got the three debuffs and you get them out. Simple as that. The hardest bit is finding these orbs and getting them to spawn. Nothing you can do to influence it other than jumping shards from, from my knowledge. So we've had a slug, now a snail. Big Slick in the City is a daily locked quest where you race around on a snail each day. It's essentially a rep grind. You build loyalty by racing the snail every day and you gain reputation with the Glimmer Rog Racers. This unlocks with a quest called Snailed It at 56.55 and then the dailies are down at 44.80 and you want to go there every day and keep racing to build the rep. You can also show the, the same guy some snails from outside of the cavern to gain rep. So if you're into pet battling, you can go out, catch all these snails and show them for a big rep gain. Uh, this is a time gated one. You're going to have to come here every day, grind it out slowly. But, you know, another snail mount. I think these look great. So worth the grind, in my opinion. OK, next up, the subterranean magma moth. This is a big blue mammoth, another hand in quest in 10.1. You need to collect and trade in coins. One unearthed fragment coin trades in for one coveted bauble at a spin sower at 56.55. So basically collect fragment coins. These drop all over at the little horn events. So if you hang around in the, uh, the new zone long enough, you'll see these little horns, the golden horns on the map. Go over there, they're like little mini quests, mini events. Go do these and you'll get these coins. Trade them in for the baubles. 100 coins, 100 baubles, go buy them out at the vendor. Simple as that. This is an easy one to grind out if you can just hang around and wait for the horns. There is a little lockout on it, but yeah, you can get this grinded quite fast. Next up, we've got a ton of shale wings. So let's go through them. First up, the boulder hauler. This is tied to the bartering system in 10.1. You have to trade 170 barter bricks to the NPC Ponzo in the Zaralek Caverns. This is fairly time graded, but you can farm it quite a lot. So you get one from the get rich quick quest. It, uh, that unlocks the bartering system as a whole. You get 10 from the quest that unlocks at Renown 3. If you go to Faldraken, you'll have profession quests that involve trading crafted items back in the caverns and you get 10 bricks for each of these two. So there's 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 some some lockout here. There's you can also grind treasures. They come from the maps as well. This is it's a long grind, but once you have the 170 bricks, you just trade them straight in. If you look in the actual collections tab at this mount, there's a, there's an error here at the time of recording because it's changed since the public test realm. So you used to have to collect one item, trade it in for the bricks, and then do something else. That's scrapped. Now you just do your big quests, do the events, get 170 bricks hand them in for the mount. Simple as that. They made it very simple. Next shell wing, the igneous shell wing. This is exactly the same as the one we talked about before, the subterranean magma moth, exactly the same. Coins, except instead of 100, you need 400. So go do the horn quests, but do a lot more. 400 coins, 400 baubles, buy them out from the same place. Locations are earlier in the video. We talked about the subterranean magma moth. Okay, next, the cobalt shell wing. This is a rare drop. And I know some people might be thinking, oh, I still haven't got the ones from the Forbidden Reach. I still haven't got the This one's easier. This is just one boss. Yeah, you don't have to farm loads of different things. One guy, Karokta. You have to farm this rare. It spawns at 4366 with a small chance to drop. That's it. No strange currencies, tokens, weird mysteries. Just if you see it, go kill it. Kill it on multiple characters if you have to. And good luck. RNG. Best of luck with it. Next up, the Shadow Flame Shale Wing. This is your big grind. This is your glory of Rhine, the glory of the Aberus Raider. This is your raid achievement mount for the season. As always, there is a bunch of obscure achievements tied behind this. And likely once the raid has been out a while, we'll start seeing the glory of parties farm and you can go and try and get this mount. I won't go over every achievement here as that would be a whole video in itself. And these are super long, super obscure, and they take a while for people to start getting into. But if you're raiding, these glory mounts are always fun to do. I do think they've dropped the ball a little bit on this model. Where's the shadow flames? I don't know. I would have expected like a deep purple sort of on this. Uh, it just looks like another shade of the fire mount, but who knows? Maybe just a placeholder at the time of recording. Next up, the catalogued shale wing. This is a reward for doing the new event, Researchers Under Fire. This event unlocks with the release of the raids and new dungeons this week. It spawns every hour. And uh, yeah, so as you complete the, the, the event, at the end, you'll get given a little bag. It can be green, blue, or purple, depending on how well the event goes. And I've seen it drop in a blue bag, so don't worry too much about the quality. I think you can only do this once per week. So 
You can only get this drop once per week, but you can do it on alts if you have alts and you want to run them through it as well. But yeah, I, I did it with a friend and in the first week they got it on the first drop in a blue bag. So definitely, definitely grindable if you've got alts. Definitely grindable over a, a period of time. Doesn't seem like the drop chance is too crazy on this either. Her and a lot of people get this one. So on to the next one. The Morsel Sniffer. There's another Shell Wing. Yet again, this is one for gaining reputation with the Niffin. Simply get to Renown 18 for this one. So log in every day, grind the zone, the quest, the dailies. Just live in this zone and you'll get this eventually. As with everything else in WoW, usually rep gets easier the longer the content is out. So we might see catch up for this, but for now, you can just start grinding it out. You get rep from everything here, so good luck. Okay, away from the Shell Wings, the Inferno Armadon, the new Season 2 Mythic Plus mount. The Inferno Armadon, not much to say here. Get Keystone Master, Season 2. With the release of the new season, get back to grinding those keys. I do have a video going over the new gearing system. If you're confused by that, I'll link that down below. But hopefully with the new system, it might make the Mythic Plus grind a little easier. It might make it easier on the early levels of Mythic Plus, like getting into the, the low level Mythics because of how the gearing works. But yeah, if you've never done a Keystone Master achievement before, you need to get 2000 Keystone score in season two dungeons, which just means you've got to do the dungeons at a high level. Try and aim for like 15s ish. And yes, I'm still sorry that this isn't a flying mount. Why isn't it a dragon? Talking about good, good mounts, the PvP mounts, Season 2 PvP mounts, the Vicious War Snail first for completing PvP Season 2 at a high rank. So yeah, just just get get the, get the to a higher rank in, in rated PvP, grind it out, do clear your matches at the high rank, and you'll get this reward. It's the same as every other PvP mount in the game that follows this system. But yeah, this is all of the mounts, I think, in patch 10.1. As of right now, more might come out throughout the season. Hidden ones might get discovered. I'm always checking the hidden mount discord, but... Who knows? But now I think this is everything. I have kept this as just mounts, like actual mounts that you can ride, the actual physical mounts. There are skins for the dragons that have been released. There's a, a new skin for the, in the Aberus raid, there's a skin. And then there's a, 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 a dragon skin for the Slither Drake for doing Gladiator PVP. And then you do get a new rideable dragon as part of the story. But again, all skins for the Dragonflight dragon system, but this is just mounts, all the mounts. So yeah, that's it. I'll wrap it up here timestamp you can jump around if any of it's not clear but yeah that's it good luck getting the mounts there's a lot there's some really cool ones there's a hell of a lot of shell wings so hopefully you like the shell wings but if not there's always the next patch you can always go back and do the forbidden reach anyway anyway i'm rambling end of the video take care everyone subscribe for more and i'll uh, i'll catch you in the next one bye